Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Authority Part 3. So we've been looking at authority as not only the power to do something, but the right to do that thing. You know, Jesus always had the power to save us. But because we tried to seize authority for ourselves in the garden, were usurped by Satan, deceived into actually letting him have authority, until Jesus came and lived in our place, died in our place, and then was resurrected, he didn't have the right to save us. But now he has the power and the right, he has the authority to utterly save us from all of our past and all of our sin into all of his grace and all of his love and all of the wonder eternity will bring. Isn't that amazing? And we've got to see that coming into this uh, wonderful authority is a delegated thing. We've been talking about that and we have to recognise it's not about getting to the top of the pile. It's about actually putting myself under something. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. But firstly, I want you to get excited about delegated authority. Because probably the word delegated huh, it can make you feel a bit dreary and down and authority coupled with it. Oh my gosh, this is not a very exciting subject. But the centurion, as we spoke about last time, got it. He understood delegated authority and Jesus said, wow, I have not found such great faith in all of Israel. I think all of us today would say, I'd love to be picked out by Jesus as having great faith. I think great faith is something to be sought after. And it comes partly through understanding and recognising authority and living under that. And so I want you to get excited about your delegated authority. And part of our problem in the West is we live individualistically. We think of me. So as soon as I talk about authority, well, how much authority have I got? Where do I come in the pecking order? What about my calling and what God's saying to me? Rather than recognising that God's always called his people. He's a God of family. It's a God of where we truly love one another, which is to lift each other up more than ourselves. And so I want to just share some verse or a verse from uh, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. This is our delegated authority. This is what you and I have been called to do. His intent, God's intent through the gospel, was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Isn't that incredible? Our job is to proclaim the whole picture, the whole wonder, the entirety of God's skill and brilliance in saving us, in rescuing us and bringing us into his kingdom. That's, that's delegated authority. So let's get excited about this thing. You know, Jesus lived under delegated authority. I want you to see that. And even now, you know, when he was asked, um, you know, about the times, that what would happen when the end would come and the end of the world, he said, not for me to know, that's with the Father. And he didn't seem upset or annoyed about that. When he was in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4, after his great encounter with the Father speaking his love over him and his baptism and the Holy Spirit filling him, there, alone, hungry in the wilderness, Satan tempts him to give up delegated authority. That's the big picture temptation, uh, temptation that Jesus faced into. Take it for yourself. Seize it. Step out from under the Father. You can do it. You can have it all. Those were the temptations. And every time Jesus basically says, no, I'm staying here. I'm sticking to this. Now, we know that Jesus is called the pearl of great price. He is of inestimable value. So we recognise there that Jesus, who's always happy with delegated authority, had nothing to do with his value. I know we mentioned this last time, but I want you to get it. In the world system, value is found out how much authority you have. In our system, authority, your delegated authority and position in that has nothing to do with your value. Our value is found in the love of a father through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. That's our value. And so we are set free to enjoy him 
and enjoy that and being part of delegated authority. And the key to living under authority is again a difficult word. It's a word submission. Now I don't know if you've ever watched uh, the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championships. Probably for a lot of you wouldn't be your cup of tea, not really mine. I thought I'd check it out and I've watched a couple fights. And you'd think this sort of no holds barred cage fight where um, other than biting or kicking between the legs, pretty much anything else goes, would be some wondrous sort of Bruce Lee uh, entertainment. Sadly, it generally ended up as two sweaty men lying on the floor, uh, sort of cuddling each other into submission. And basically, one of them would get someone around the throat uh, and would keep on choking them and get them in a sort of lock that they couldn't get out of till either the guy would tap the floor as a sign to the referee that he'd submitted or he'd pass out. Um, and that's how the kingdom of darkness works. That's how the world works. Submission is ultimately enforced. You must submit. You can choose to or not, but if you don't, tough, you're going to have to. Submission in the kingdom is completely different. It's an invitation to obey God, but he never forces us. And it's the same and has to be the same in leadership and church. We're not here to force anybody to do anything. You've not got to submit to me or got to submit to this leader or whatever. It's a choice made out of love and a recognition of the freedom that Christ has brought to us. Submission is not about agreeing with everything that someone says. It's about embracing. I can disagree with someone I'm submitted to and still embrace them because I realise and recognise that there's a greater uh, call upon us all, which is unity and which is love and is staying in that flow of authority which brings blessing. And please remember that. The reason we're teaching on authority is because we want to live in a church that's blessed and I want your lives blessed, proper, recognised as having the finger of God over. And blessing comes as we live under authority, recognising that, not being squashed, but being set free. And we see this through the Bible, this call to submit. And first and foremost, I want you to recognise that in Ephesians 5, we're called to submit to one another. For me, that's the, 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 the beginning and the end of it in one way, that, that submission is always mutual. Yeah? Just because I'm the leader doesn't mean that everyone submits to me and I submit to no one. No, there is a mutual submission, a mutual recognition of the value each one of us have, uh, of the heart each one of us has, that each one of us at best is only a piece of the puzzle. And as we all live in peace and freedom and love for one another, that beautiful puzzle can come together. Submitting to one another. And, and that's got to come first because we don't see that, then else it will end up a top down tier system where submission is always to some leader above you or whatever. Uh, and, and, and we miss the point of what God is after. You know, submission and being a leader is not a nice thing. I must say, uh, the last few years, I've felt proper scared about my position in serving all of you as your leader. I've looked around the world and you're probably aware of so many Christian leaders falling, so many messing up, so many um, disastrous outcomes for lives that were so anointed and so blessed. And I'll be honest, I don't pretend to be any better. I look at these people and go, well, if that's happened to them, what hope is there for me? It's a scary place to be. And a lot of people will say, hey, we need accountability. That's what was missing, accountability. But again, it's the world's accountability, which is top down. It's forced. You've got to be accountable. And of course, I can only be accountable for what I'm prepared to be accountable about. You know, I could be secretly smuggling weapons, but if I'm not prepared to tell Dave Day or Andrew Price or any of the other people I'm submitted to um, that I'm doing that, it, it's of no worth. Submission, accountability, true accountability comes from a heart. And my heart, I'm desperate for more submission. I 
hate it whenever I feel that there's a lack of it around me, a lack of my ability to submit to others, to be in that place. I truly believe that if I'm to lead you well, I have to be the most submitted person in the room. The further you go with God, the less it becomes about your own agenda or dreams or hopes and the more it becomes about seeing everyone else's dreams and hopes fulfilled. Submission has to be in everybody. Never submit to someone who submits to no one. There's got to be someone I make my whole life available to. You know, for example, when I felt God speak to me about a sabbatical in 2019, I don't go, right, well, I better take it then. Off I go. Yes, we all hear for Jesus, from Jesus. Yeah, hear from God. But then we submit to one another. And so I went and saw Dave Day and I shared that with him. And genuinely, if he'd said, I don't think that's a good idea, Matt, that would have been a massive, I would have gone back to God saying, hey, because it matters to me because I recognise how God works and how God flows. And like I said, it's not agreeing with everybody, it's embracing. I love uh, the story of uh, the Lord of the Rings films. I remember watching the making of, and they interviewed one of the artists who was designing this Tolkien-esque world, you know, and trying to get the pots and, uh, and, and, and uh, architecture right and all of those things that they were making in the costumes and everything. And they said... Their goal was to draw on all of Tolkien. And if you're aware, it's not just his writings, but since that time, there's been many artists who've tried to imagine the world that Tolkien painted uh, or created. And they said their intent was to try and stay as close as possible to what was genuinely Tolkien. And if that object got in the film, that was a bonus. Wow. They understood Submission, they understood the joy uh, 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 that for me to hear God and to make those things available. But I lay it down. I don't go around going, well, God said this to me, therefore we've got to do it. No, we, we come in submission. We come in a place of freedom where we say, hey, this is what I've got. And, you know, in a sense, being a place of decision making is always pretty scary. And a lot of it, I honestly find I don't enjoy. Um, but I know it's a way to serve. And I just want to encourage all of us into that place. Let me just read, sorry, reach down, um, from Hebrews chapter 13. Um, and here it talks about submitting to leaders. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they're keeping watch over your souls as those who have to give an account. Let them do this with joy, not with groaning, for that would be no, of no advantage to you. So scripture does tell us to submit to one another and it does tell us to submit to our leaders. But please hear me, those words there are, are not something that I go, yes, you know, or any of the team are like, wonderful. Yeah, that's a great responsibility. I hope you recognise in me that I do try and work on my character. I do not get everything right by a long shot. But I make sure that I put things right where I do mess up. I went away on sabbatical and I didn't go on a holiday. I went to get more character, to build more godliness, to more Jesus in my life so I could serve you and hopefully lead you in a better way. Submission to leadership is probably the best picture is one of the orchestra. And there's a conductor. And in the end, the ultimate conductor is Jesus. Please, please it's not me or some team. And we all play our part. And I don't know if you've ever gone, uh, I love the big London shows and I love it when the orchestra's practising beforehand and they're playing all their different instruments and, and none of it's connecting or in tune, you know, um, but they're just warming up. It sounds a bit of a din. It's not nice. And yet when they begin to play and each person does their part, as they submit one to another and submit to the conductor, this beautiful harmony erupts. And they're happy when they're told to stop their bit. It's because they let someone else and they celebrate that instrument being played. And then they bring theirs in at the right time. What a beautiful picture of what we're called to. And so just to finish, uh, when 
uh, in Acts chapter 8, we see a beautiful picture of this mutual submission and submission to leaders happening. In Acts 8, Philip ha- has fled Jerusalem because of the persecution that broke out after Stephen's death. And he gets to Samaria and begins to preach the gospel. And loads of people respond like revival breaks out. And so John and Peter visit. Uh, and as they visit, We just see this beautiful submission going on. Peter and John don't turn up and go, well, who the heck told you that you should come here and do this? They don't try and sweep uh, Philip aside and say, well, we're the leaders now. Uh, uh, We're in control. Get out of the way. Neither does Philip say, well, what are you guys doing here? This is my work. I've done all this. How dare you come in here? They're just joyfully playing their instrument, the bit they're called to do. You know, if you're called to be a leader, lead well. Um, If you're called to follow, if you're called to do this, you're called to do that, do it brilliantly. Play your instrument well. And what we see there is Peter and John come and say, wow, look what's happened. Hey, what have you shared? And he's talked about a baptism, but he's not brought baptism in the Holy Spirit. So Peter and John are like, we'll do that bit. And, And they work together to see Jesus glorified and the kingdom come. May you understand and are your eyes open to the beauty of submission may it be something desirous for you that you go out of your way as i do and will continue to do to find more people to submit to more delegate authority in our lives and may we see that not as something that squashes us not as something that forces us into a shape but something that really releases god in us May we embrace freedom. God bless you. At your name, oh Jesus, Jesus.